Hello, everyone. Hey, how are you? Um, I see I already have hands up. I can't answer hands at this point, so we're going to hold those off until after we have our monologues by David and Susan, which is coming up in very, very shortly. And um, this is a very different, very special kind of night. So I just want to share with you, share with everybody how the, tonight is going to work. So we have two monologues by Susan Sullivan and David Selby, both directed by Asad Kalata. And after the monologues, these deal with something very special. And they deal with basically how our parents still influence our lives even into adulthood. And that is the topic about um, that David and Susan are going to be speaking about. And then afterwards, we want to open that up to conversation. So if you guys want to share um, your own experiences with Susan and David and the rest of our audience, that is what we're about. That's what we're doing tonight. This is all about building community. It's all about sharing what's on our minds, sharing what's on our hearts, because we've sort of been locked down for the last couple of years. It's a lot going on in the world. There's a lot going on in our lives. So this is really sharing our thoughts about this topic with an audience that literally exists all over the world. So we started Smartphone Theater a couple of years ago in March of 2020. The audience has since grown exponentially and I couldn't be more thrilled about that. So that's the plan for tonight. We're gonna to get right into the monologues afterwards. Uh, I will pop back on and uh, along with Susan and David, we will start a conversation. And then what I ask is everybody, if you want to speak and talk about these topics, um, please either raise your hand. You can also type it into our Q&A. If you raise your hand, then you'll be able to speak directly on our, on our uh, smartphone theater Zoom platform. If you type it in, then I will read your thoughts aloud. And to our YouTube audience, which we have quite a few people on YouTube as well, you can type it into the chat, and then I'll go and, and read that online as well. So that's how tonight is going to work. I hope you enjoy. It's a brand new format for us. So, um, you know, very exciting, and, uh, and that's what we've got. So don't go away. We're going to jump right into our monologues. And then, um, and then afterwards, we're going to have a lot of fun. All right. So see you in a bit. My wife announces after lunch that she is going to read her book. That means she's going to recline on the couch, pull the blanket up and read. That is her way of telling me to stop clamoring the pots and pans, stop you know, loading the dishwasher, you know, and don't clean the countertops. And above all, above all, don't run the sweeper. <laughs> I have been guilty of running the sweeper when my family is trying to watch television. Sorry, I will say. And I've also been known to load the dishwasher when a certain someone's trying to take a nap. Sorry, Sarah is among us, my wife will say. Oh, Sarah is my mother's name. Sorry, I say again. Uh, sorry doesn't do it, my wife says. She says she will scream if I say I'm sorry one more time. Just please, David, sit down and relax. All right. Sorry, I mumbled. Ah, you sound just like your mother, David. We both laughed. Finally, my wife declares she is going to close her eyes. And that is my final warning to cease all my activities. I promise that I will. I won't make a sound, not a peep. I just want to very quietly finish dusting. Ah, you are your mother, my wife says. Now hearing that caused me to pause. I am my mother. Well, they don't call me Sarah for nothing. <sighs> I do find it hard to rest. When I was a boy, I used to 
bounce my head on a couch, sing-songing through my day. I bounced so much, I wore a bald spot on the back of my head. Bouncing was just a way of, for me to relax, I guess. Maybe my mother's nonstop motion, cleaning and scrubbing, was her way of relaxing. She'd tell dad, I mean, she was the hardest worker. I mean, she'd say, I can do it. And there she'd be down on her knees, scrubbing the floors, you know, every nook and cranny over and over and over and over again. God, she couldn't stop. Then, then she did. A matter of fact nurse told me over the phone that my mother was in a coma. The nurse was hesitant to say anything more until I spoke with the doctor, but the doctor wasn't available. So when I arrived at the hospital, hours later after my cross country flight, near midnight on a fall day that was blowing December in ahead of schedule, I found my mother only being kept alive by a machine. Instantly, I wanted to rip it off of her, but she would have told me to go home. I know you have something better to do, David, so go home. <laughs> yeah. My mother didn't want me or anyone else to see her this way. She was always dressed to the nines. My mother wouldn't think of going to the grocery store or even taking out the trash without looking her best. Indeed, my mother could have walked down Fifth Avenue in New York City on any given day and been welcomed into any store. <sighs> now, she was shoving me out of her hospital but I could not ignore my mother's dying as much as she would have liked me to. Please don't dote over me, David. I know you have something else to do. No, mom, no, it's midnight and we're trapped. And I'm not prepared for this. Her face is still beautiful. No one ever cared for a home more than you, Mom. But you could have walked away without glancing back, just like you're walking into death on your own terms, no fuss, no bother. You don't want anyone waiting on you, you know? If you can't get your own glass of water, you'd just as soon go thirsty. When morning finally came, they unplugged the machine. And I, I prayed that mom had finally found rest for she would tell me every time I would ask her, plead with her, please mom, for God's sake, stop working. Just sit down and rest. I will have plenty of time to rest, David. Trust me. Well, as I sat there, I suddenly realized that this is the most intimate conversation, the most intimate relationship we have ever had. Her presence is so close. I'm sorry I ever took you for granted, Mom. I only realize now how desperately and unselfishly, you loved me. 
But you, <laughs> you were always giving. You never wanted to receive. It was though if you gave and gave and gave and gave, no one else would have the time or the inclination to talk about you, who you were, who you were. Oh, you stayed the course, Ma. You not only improved your own life, you improved life for dad and your two boys by leaps and bounds. Yeah. You know, but you could, you could never do enough. And you could never stop apologizing. Sorry, 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 <laughs> was your mantra. <laughs> I mean, the house was never clean enough, sorry. The meal you just spent hours preparing was never, ever good enough, sorry. Oh. But you, you were enough, Mom. You did enough. God, moms like you are why the world moves, especially my world. I just realized, Mom. I just realized. <laughs> I, I am you. <laughs> David, mom is Sarah. Sarah is sitting right here with you. Thank you, mom. Thank you for giving yourself to me. For tearing up like me for getting depressed like me. Goodbye, mom. I love you. I have learned to take my dear wife's advice and just sit and relax. After lunch, I put my feet up I put my headphones on and I listen to my classical music while my wife reclines on the couch, pulls the blanket up and reads her book. Then after a while, I remove my headphones and my wife puts down her book and we, we just enjoy the gift of each other's being. Ah, oh, you hear it? quiet, the silence of our love. So I'm, I'm sitting in the backyard. It's been a bad day. <laughs> oh, wait, let, let, let me be more accurate. It's been a horrific day. Lots of thoughts rumbling around in my busy brain. Bottom line, I was fired from my job of 34 years today. I had been reported to Human Resources as an angry, difficult woman who appeared to be dangerous and was drinking on the job. Aside from that, a delight. I was escorted from the building carrying my little box of possessions. And yeah, I had that sad little dying plant. I walked with dignity, considering the two shooters I'd had at lunch. Past the eyes that all looked away, I knew they hated me, as I felt I hated them. <sighs> Get home, pour myself another scotch, big one. Trying to drown my anger when I got the feeling. 
a very distinct feeling right in the pit of my stomach. This got my attention. I'd only had it two times in my entire life. First time, I was a depressed teenager. I would come home after school. I would go up to my little attic bedroom on the third floor of our crappy two-family house, put on my little radio, and rock myself to the strains of uh, Elvis or whoever. Uh, this is a little embarrassing to admit, but I also sucked my thumb till I was about 13 and getting buck teeth, so I stopped. Degree of self-control, I'm happy to report. Anyway, you get the picture. Okay, the day I am recalling, the day of the feeling, I am uh, rocking myself when I heard my father stumbling up the attic stairs. And I thought, oh, no, 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 oh, God, no. He had never done this before. He had been getting angrier and angrier over the last few years. As a little girl, I would wait on the curb for him to come home because I could tell by the way he walked. If it was my good dad, who I adored, who adored me, or the other guy, the angry guy, the drunk guy, who was now attempting to navigate the stairs. Okay, I pretend to be asleep. He staggers into my room. He's wandering around, he's bumping into things. He's trying to say something, trying to make me understand something. But what, what? And the, and, and, and the sloppier and the more stupid and, and lost in his own meanderings he got, the angrier I got. And out of this swirl of confusion came the most shocking thought. I could kill him. I could grab him by his bony, shrunken shoulders and push him down the stairs. <sighs> yeah, I know. <laughs> well, along with that thought came the feeling, a, a very visceral sensation, okay? I didn't understand it at the time. Uh, anyway, the second time I got the feeling was a few years later when a boyfriend of mine, Al, Oh, I'm sorry. I haven't thought of him in a while. Um, my first boyfriend. Oh, God. Uh, he hung himself in his closet. I know it, it was horrible. It was a, a some kind of murky sexual thing. Anyway, when I was told about his death, I got the feeling, again, very pronounced, very pronounced, and it made me remember my father and wanting to kill him. <laughs> but I, I knew, I knew I didn't want to kill Al, but the feeling is the same. So, now it's a good 50 years later, I'm having this feeling again. And I know, I know it's not just about wanting to kill someone. In this case, my fellow workers was tempted to to linger on that thought for a while. But anyway, I let it go, I let it go. So I'm thinking if it's, if it's not about killing, then it must be about death, death itself, or the emotion of it anyway. Ugh. And what is that emotion? Oh, this is a really depressing thought. I know, it's a depressing thought, and believe me, I didn't want to go tumbling into that abyss, but I was already there. So, uh, I'm thinking, how does this pertain, this feeling, how does it pertain to what I'm going through now? And the closest I could get in my somewhat inebriated state was um, the disconnected, separate, Oh yes, yeah. separate from everything that should matter. People, places, things, jobs. So I'm trying to I'm trying to stay with this when 
<laughs> Suddenly, out of seemingly nowhere, appears this magnificent creature, an Irish setter. Seems happy to see me. Tail is wagging. I'm happy to see him. My tail is, is probably wagging. He comes over, a little tentative, kneels, puts, puts a paw on my knee, and looks at me with what I can only describe as soulful eyes. Oh, wow, where did you come from? Are you lost? You know, dog talk. And I, I think I hear, nope. Okay. Am I so buzzed I'm hearing things? Or perhaps a psychotic break, but I am willing to go along with whatever is happening here. So um, I find myself saying, yeah, well, you're a handsome fellow. What's your name? Now I hear Theodore. Uh-huh, Theodore. Who wrote this script? Theodore is my father's name. Oh, well, 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 isn't this a nice surprise? I haven't seen you in a dog's age. Now I'm making bad jokes. What brings you to the neighborhood, hmm? Oh, have you come to comfort me? Well, little late in the game, my friend, but what the hell, I need it. So, what do you have to say, hmm? Now I hear nothing, right? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Silence patience, doing not, not my thing, but anything's better than having to go back and square myself with, uh, what, being separate from, from everything, I guess. Um, and besides, I like to keep busy, keep rocking, you might say. So I'm scratching Theodore's head and under his chin, and I find myself saying, so Theodore, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where's your angry edge? You certainly managed to get yourself fired enough now, didn't you? Aha. Aha. Wait a minute. Wait a damn minute. Theodore, what are you trying to tell me? Again, I hear nothing. But I think I see a shrug. Yeah, yeah. Pretty sure I saw a little shrug. And I, I started to get it. My father, myself. My father, myself. I was, I was acting just like him. Angry, drinking, losing my job. And, and, and as I looked into the eyes of my new friend who just seemed to want to comfort me, I suddenly had this sense of why the memory of my father stumbling into my teenage room had come back to me along with the feeling he was trying to comfort me he was trying to reach out to my sad younger self trying to make me understand who he was save me from making the mistakes that had held him back and lost and angry and drunk trying just trying. <laughs> Sometimes trying is the best we can do. It's an act of love. Well, guys, I felt so sad. Oh, my Lord, such a deep sense of sadness. It felt like it would swallow you, you know. And then I thought, well, what's underneath that sadness? Maybe that's anger and, and the need for a drink so you don't have to feel that sadness. And then what's underneath that? Oh, separate. Yeah, that's the death part. Loss. Death, the ultimate loss. The feeling is of loss. I didn't want to lose him. The dad that I loved. And now it felt as if he just didn't want me to lose myself. Myself. Ah. 
I do not want to get maudlin here, but I started to cry. And trust me, I, I don't cry. It reminds me of my mother. We won't go there. But I had this strong feeling that Theodore was, was wanting me to know, hey, girls, crying, crying's good. Yep, letting go of all that mishmash inside is good. Ultimately, you're good. <laughs> and then I noticed out of the corner of my eye, Theodore's tail had knocked over my drink. Oh, Theodore, I'm not sure you're going to like me if I'm sober, my friend. I am not much fun. And now I heard, very distinctly this time, I will love you if you're sober. The hell with the fun. So, not such a bad day after all. Hello, hello. Thank you. Um, brilliant. Just brilliant. So I would love to introduce to you, to everyone, our performers. Before I do that, um, as you guys as you guys ask questions today, um, and again, let's keep the questions to today's conversation. Let's, um, uh, I do, I, by automatically coming on, you're automatically giving us consent because, you know, Smartphone Theater lives online and uh, we will rebroadcast over and over and over again. So I just want everybody to be aware of that. Okay, so first I would love to introduce um, the uh, writer and performer of uh, They Don't Call Me Sarah for Nothing, Mr. David Selby. So David, come on on. Hello, David. Remember, to, there you go, perfect. And then my father, myself, and the feeling, Susan Sullivan. Come on on, Susan. Hi, Susan. And then the director of both pieces, Mr. Assad Kalata. Hello, Assad. Guys, just beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And I'm going to take this right to the audience because we already have a bunch of hands up. So everybody, um, you know, take a couple minutes. We have a lot of people, so if it tends to go, you know, we, we're only going to go till about six o'clock. So, um, so don't take it personally if I jump in and say, okay, let's move on to the next person. All right, we're going to start with Amy Corbin. Amy, um, you are just have to unmute yourself. Amy, Amy, Amy. Hello. Hello. Hi, Amy. Hi. <laughs> what would you like to share? Well, um, I really enjoyed both the monologues and I'm very excited to be here. <laughs> um, I have to say that I definitely relate to my father the most, like you were saying, Susan. Um, we have the same emotions. Um, I tend to be very OCD like him. <laughs> um, and with my mom, I, I really um, take after her and the way of dressing like her, and I can look in the mirror, she looks exactly like me. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I, I am only 22, so I still have my parents around, um, but they have definitely made a big influence on my life, and I'm excited to see how they continue to influence me in the future as I get older. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Was I supposed to ask any questions? <laughs> I've never done anything like this before. <laughs> this is, you're brilliant. No, this was this was great. No. It's a perfect way to start off. Okay, thanks. So, uh, Susan, Asad, and David, if you want to cut me off anytime, just feel free to jump in. No, uh, you're you're doing a perfect job. And Amy, that was exactly what we're looking for. Just somebody sharing their their life, where it's like a yeah. big campfire, and we're all <laughs> sort of a community here. Thank you. Exactly. Yeah. You're Next. welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. You're welcome. All right, Shay. We're going to Shay Delin. Hi, Shay. Oh, my <laughs> ah, that was so gorgeous. That just made both my mother is right next to me also. And we were just both in tears for both of the monologues. I just wanted to ask, first of all, what inspired you to write about your parents? at this moment in time? 
Well, I, I'll, I, I can start. <clears throat> I think this time of reflection, this time of lockdown, all of that pandemic business, really you started thinking about your life. And part of mm -hmm. the journey is the relationship with, with, your, with your parents. So it was just a profound uh, experience for me to try to write this down. Aspects of this story obviously are, are true. My father was a drinker, some I made up. Um, so there's that fun of the creative process. So that's what my mm -hmm. impulse was. Yeah, my, uh, I had written before uh, about my mother. Um, book of poems uh, uh, and various other things. And so, I don't know, I just was thinking about this and uh, it just, you know, it just came out. And I was delighted uh, to uh, be able to, uh, to get it out. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I find so much about um, getting older and the pandemic have been about intimacy and your your connection with your own death. And that's brought up a lot about my mother and my father. And both of you had parallels with my mother and my father. So it was very interesting for me. And I, it brought up a little of a realization that I've had of late about my father because I've been taking a medication that alters my mood and my father had trouble with his moods and like Susan like you said you know you couldn't necessarily tell which guy was going to come in the room and I, I realized that I always have taken him to fault for it and that even though I thought that I had forgiven him I hadn't really really deeply understood it until I take this medication, which makes me angry beyond my control. <laughs> and I realized, oh, it's a chemical. It really is a chemical. And there isn't anything you can do about that. And it's brought me such profound peace and, and reconciliation. And just like every day that you live, you come closer to that place of, um, of uh, uh, absolute acceptance and these two pieces just brought me further into that place i just really thank you for that thank you shay thank you for sharing that was beautiful shay thank yeah. you and yeah. i still want you to get together with todd at some point <laughs> you will match, make, make make me a match okay no, yes have... i will okay all right <laughs> See you in New York, Shay, or LA. Uh, <laughs> I, I will absolutely. We, let's do some. Let's do projects together, guys. Well, here we are, still in Zoom. When we might as well take advantage of it. Would love to. All right. Be careful. Be careful what you wish for, Shay. <laughs> <You're doing laughs> great. All right. Thank you. We're gonna run to. Uh, we're gonna run to Cheryl Storm. So, Cheryl. Oh, here. Can you? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, good. Um, yeah. I've been a fan of both of you guys for years, but mostly I have to admit with David. Um, it was several years ago, well, 11 years ago, my mom passed away. Uh, she had a stroke the day before the big blizzard hit that year. And she passed away the following Saturday on your birthday. <laughs> uh. and it's ironic because there was a connection between your mom, my mom, and my daughter is that they all three share the same middle name. And I told my mom, gee, all these years, I thought I was naming her after you. And here I was naming her after his mom, too. And she thought that was so funny. Oh. And she was really the glue that helped, kept our family together. And she, I know she's always been here with me since then. That my daughter's last dance recital, which was the only one she wasn't there in person for uh, her wedding five years ago. And three years ago, she was there, hold my hand, which I'm glad she wasn't there physically because this was stressed her out beyond belief is when I got diagnosed with breast cancer. Uh -huh. I'm totally free. Uh, watching watching you and reading your book sometimes helped during that too. But uh, uh -huh. I her strength that has kept me going through that, that. And she had a wonderful sense of humor. She passed on to me. And uh, I came home, my kitties would, uh, cuddle up with me and they nursed me through too. They were my nurses. And I lost one of them two years ago to kidney failure, but I 
got re not replaced my best successor a few days later. But uh, you helped me through a lot of tough times during my life, and her, you and my mom have been my biggest influences. Oh, God bless you. I've tried to meet you several times, and it just never seems to work out. I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you? I'm in Illinois right now. Oh, I was You're in not Illinois. Going, David. Where about Illinois? <laughs> I, I oh no, David. Other people want to talk. <laughs> oh, sorry, Cheryl. That was very, oh, very beautiful. Cheryl, beautiful, my love. Thank you. And you just met David. I've been by told the way. to you know, be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl. I'm going to be quiet. <laughs> um, that. Oh, he's so sensitive. And I've been watching. Oh, Cheryl, I'm sorry. I hit the button. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, I apologize for hitting the button too early. Um, we're going to go to um, to Michael, Michael Young. Hello, Michael here from Germany. Hello, Michael. Good morning. Um, first of all, thank you, Todd and Susan and David and Assad for this opportunity to get in touch with you. That's uh, awesome for me. <laughs> I was 11 or 12 when I met David and Susan for the first time on the TV uh, uh, set with my grandma. And since then, you two have been a part of my life, along with the rest of the Falkencrest cast. <laughs> yeah. God bless them all. Thank you. And it and it's so great to share memories about parents. That's that's so extraordinary. Um, I already have David's book, My Mother's Autumn, on the shelf. It has, has uh, it has a very special place. And um, thank you, Michael. You're you're in my heart. You 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 both are in my heart for so, such a long time. And I am very fortunate that my parents are still alive and healthy. And uh, we had a very difficult relationship with each other for many, many years. But the older we get, the better we learn to understand and respect each other. And that's life. That's the circle of life, I think. Um, I realize more and more how much I resemble my father, the older I get. And uh, when I was young, we were actually completely opposite and in the vast ma majority of views and ways of life. And I actually really hated him a lot. And today I'm 50, he's 77. And I know today that his talents are mine too. That's so crazy, you know? Um, he paints, he paints beautiful pictures and carves wonderful figures out of wood. And I make photo collages on the computer and edit emotional videos from old family photos. Yeah, he used to collect thousands of newspaper articles on nursing and bio biology for his profession. And I collect thousands of newspaper articles about 80s primetime soaps like Dallas and Falkencrest. <laughs> That's beautiful. And so on and so on. And a few years ago, I discovered a song by the band Men of War. That's a heavy metal band. I don't like heavy metal, but this song has so strong lyrics. Um, and this text describes my relationship uh, with my dad very well. And I think that it can also be valuable for you, maybe. Uh, so I would love to share this text now with you. It's okay? Please. When I was small, you took me by the hand. Father, you should know, I finally understand. You taught me wrong from right and how to live. You gave the greatest gift that one could give. You never let me down. You made me strong when I made mistakes, when I was wrong. Some days we'd laugh and some days we'd fight. Somehow you knew one day I'd say you were right. You're with yeah. me in every word I say in every hour of every single day. And all I do, I'm just a part of you. And in uh, the band, had a German version of this song and I translate the last 
to um, the last two uh, sentences because they are so strong for me. And I think that's what you both um, uh, told us. Father, just one more. I thank you. Every word you said it's, is now a part of me. I think that's so great. Beautiful, Michael. <laughs> yes. That's wonderful. Yes, terrific one. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. May I ask Thank one you. question to, 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 to you guys? Please. Do you believe that that is the end? I'm, I'm unclear again, Michael. I'm sorry. What are you exactly are you referring to that that is the end? Do you think death is the end? Well, <laughs> I, Michael, I, uh, <laughs> Michael. <laughs> That's a big question, Michael. Big question. That's for the next episode. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, Michael, Michael, why yeah. don't you write some things about that yourself? That's an interesting question. And thank you very much. Your your share was really beautiful and deep and thoughtful, and, yeah. and I appreciate it. Yes, thank you. I thank you. God bless you. God bless thank you. you. Thank you, Michael. Uh, we're going to move to Leslie. So Leslie Dove Smith. Leslie. Hi. Can you hear me? We sure can. Hello. Hi. Okay. Great. Hi. Uh, well, first of all, I just wanted to say how blown away I was by your monologues. David, you made me cry. And Susan, I just, I, I just can't get over your acting. Whenever I watch you, you blow me away. Um, I'm sitting here, I'm from, we're in Newfoundland, Canada, and I'm sitting here watching this with my mother. And uh, I'm 36, so I'm very glad to say I have both my parents still. But um, the last few years, I've been going through a very, very serious depression. Uh, and um, so I've had to move home. Um, and both my parents have been just amazing. They've kind of saved me. And um, to have that connection with my mother as she went through it when she was in her 40s, um, it's kind of brought us closer. You know, she's sitting here crying now. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, I wanted to thank you for bringing up this subject. It's, um, it's really great to be reminded, you know, to think about your relationship with them and how, how different you are and, and how much exactly the same you are in, in ways. And um, it was just beautiful. Both of your monologues really resonated and um, I wanted to thank you and I publicly want to thank my mom for um, just being the greatest mom in the world. Anyway, thank you very much. And uh, I hope to see more of, of all you guys. Thank, thank you, you, Leslie. Thank, thank you. you, Leslie. Thank you. And we're gonna go to Dirk. Dirk Mayer, Dirk Meyer. Yes, thank you so much. At first, I want to say um, um, I lost my father four weeks ago, actually, on a Friday night. And when I found the video of Susan, it really touched me because I have admired you since the 80s, since Viking Crest. And um, my father and I, we didn't have a relationship for six years. He was a farmer and I couldn't wait to get away from the farm. And I went all the way to New York. I fulfilled my dreams. And we never had the opportunity to get back together. I tried several times, but our generation always wants to discuss all the issues, all the problems. And his generation probably was hoping the storm would pass by until he was killed during a storm in Germany four weeks ago. So I went to the funeral. I took my two kids with me. And, um, and I realized during that time on the farm that there was still a lot which connected us, like the, 
the love for the horses. I found out he still had an old horse, which was 20 years old. He had kept her because he knew that we shared the passion and he was always probably hoping I would come back and see that horse. And my daughter, she fell in love with the cows. And I never heard that he loved me or that he was proud of me. But at the funeral, people came to me and they said, your dad talked about your children all the time. He told everybody in the village about it. And I had my children through surrogacy, which is even illegal in Germany. So it was a big deal for him. And it was a big deal for me that he had accepted us. And after he died and I was able to start grieving, I actually started to realize that we had many good years, that we had many good moments. The time we didn't talk for six years, it was all about the bad times and me for him to come around. And what helped me after his, his death during the last weeks was, I believe when someone goes, the spirit is still around us. And I had the feeling that whatever I thought or wanted to tell him, it would still go to him and he would know about it. And nowadays I have a son myself and um, my, my son, my daughter, my brother, my father, myself, we all had that curly hair. My son is now uh, almost two and he will get his hair, first haircut. And I just, it just helps me to know that life continues and that a part of him will continue to live in my children. And what also helps me is to keep his memory alive. So finally, after all these years, I put a big picture of the farm here on the wall in New York City, and I'm getting pictures done of him because I want my children to know uh, where they are from. And I want him finally, after all the time, to play an active part in our life, even if he's gone, but the memories are still there. And I think that counts for a lot. And I really want to thank you for putting that piece together because it's such a challenging time for myself and for my family. And I believe I'm grieving quite well, but it's nice to hear those stories from you as well. And I've always adored you since the eighties. We had only three TV channels in Germany and Falcon Quest was a big deal. And especially you, David Salvi, the character you played was very strong, but also very vulnerable. And I think I took a lot about from that. And my father was very similar to you as well. He couldn't express his feelings. So thank you both for tonight. Thank you, Dirk. Thank you, Dirk. Thank you. And thank you so much for letting me speak. That means a lot uh, to you. Such, <laughs> such a pleasure to listen to you speak. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Thank you. You too. We're going to go to Colleen. Colleen Gandhi. Let's see here. Colleen, it says... A lot of talk is not available because Colleen is using an older version of Zoom. Uh, Colleen, we have to figure that out. <laughs> so Colleen, don't go away. Um, we're going to figure out how I can make you make this work, okay? But you're using an older version of Zoom and it won't let me promote you. So I'm going to figure that out in the meantime. So, But don't go away. Keep your hand up. We're going to go. You know what? Let me read something really quick. Sheila Hoffenberg. She says, hi, Sheila. I'm having a problem trying to call in, but I was very close to my mom and I lost her 20 years ago in a tragic car accident. It's hard to get over it. and I never will. So thank you for sharing, Sheila. Um, Betty, Kirk Betty Kirkland also shared and so did Noreen Halpern. So thank you, everybody, for sharing. We have a bunch of Q, a bunch of other notes. One as far as Spain. So I'm, I'm loving that. Um, so Colleen, oh, you okay, Colleen, David, I watched my mom die from a heart attack 13 years ago, so I know what you went through. I still go through it every day. So that that is Colleen to type that in. So thank you, Colleen. Um, I'm still going to do my best to, to figure out what to do here, um, technology. Uh, Gina Acosta. So Gina, you're up. Hi, you guys. Can you hear me? Sure can. Hi, Gina. Hi. Well, first of all, Assad, you son of a bitch, you owe me a couple of martinis. 
<laughs> happy, happy late New Year, my friend. It's been way too long, and uh, so we'll get caught up. Um, I just, uh, I have to really thank um, the four of you for doing what you've done and coming to the table with incredibly brave and vulnerable um, the subject. Uh, I think so often people just cover it up or they pass it by or it's uncomfortable or so to use this platform to experience what we're ex you know feeling all the feels as they say and the idea that that young woman Leslie uh, t talking about going through her depression um, and the fact that it was so meaningful to listen to your your stories with her mother, um, it just it's 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 so wonderful to have a place where you can really just kind of um, open your heart and and open your ears and embrace you know some frightening things and some heavy emotions and it's just so wonderful to. Uh, be part of this and I have to say I couldn't think of a better director than Assad. He has spent many hours hearing many of my stories and being the warmest listener, the warmest guide and, and uh, the safest place to bring so many troubled things that I've experienced um, in my life. And so to know that he was the captain of this of this ship today was uh, was just you know marvelous. And thank you guys so so much for sharing this. And I really hope this might be kind of a regular kind of a thing, a little campfire. It's possible. Uh, so it was so um, beautiful work. Thank you. I just, it, it, it made my night. Thank you so oh, much. Thank you very much. Um, it's yeah. very possible that, who knows, it could become a regular thing. Um, you know, this was a, an experiment and I love the community and I love the conversation that's happening right now. So uh, I'm for it and I, I, I'm very good at twisting arms. So we'll, we'll see what's next. I do want to read, um, so Peggy Sullivan Stovall said, I just want to include an observation from an adopted child. I've always felt a disconnect to my adopted parents, although they loved me dearly. By finding my biological family, I get a sense of who I am, where I came from, and where my talents and parts of my personality come from. As both you and David and Susan have brilliantly performed and touched me, I loved it. I loved hearing these stories. Thank you. So that's from Peggy. Peggy, thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, Nancy, Nancy S. Thank you, Peggy. Yes, thank you, Peggy. Nancy. Nancy. Hello. Hi, Nancy. Hi there. First, Todd, thank you for helping me get online. Oh, of course. Of course. <laughs> I, I had some trouble getting uh, the link for this, so thank you for helping me oh, with that earlier. Um, David and Susan, as a college student, I was probably way too emotionally invested in the relationship of Richard and Maggie. Um, and so I've followed you both over the years, David, I have your book, Susan, we've loved all the other frogans that you've done on TV. Um, so when I saw that the two of you were doing this tonight, I was ecstatic. And then when I saw what you were performing, my heart was full because I am helping an aging father navigate the aging process. And, uh, as we still both mourn the loss of my mom a decade or so ago, uh, we grieve her every day and I'm sure we will for the rest of our lives. And um, so to be able to hear your perspectives and um, everyone else on here tonight has just been really um, cathartic, I guess. And um, just really, um, really moving. And I, uh, I appreciate you both being willing to be vulnerable and put yourselves out there and and uh, let us know your experiences. And yeah, it's just, it's a lot. And um, I have siblings, but I'm the one that's kind of front and center um, with this. And 
it's, it's an honor to be. Um, but I always knew that I was my mom. There was never a question of that. And aside from my husband, she was my best friend and, <laughs> and I, I miss her every day and their marriage was beautiful and they were each other's world and we lost her very suddenly and it was quite a shock and um the blessing of this last years without her the silver lining has been discovering that i also am my father and um he i always knew that he was a treasure he's sort of like the mr rogers of our our you know sphere our universe but um he's amazing and i love seeing him in a way that i didn't get to whenever kind of my mom and i had their relationship and so being able to have such a different relationship with him these past years has been such a gift um so i think that in loss there comes a gift and i've been really blessed to to be able to experience that firsthand. And I, I think I'm a lot luckier than a lot of people that um, have been listening to this tonight. And I'm, I'm grateful for that. And I'm grateful for all of you for, for allowing us to all share with each other tonight. So thank you for that. Thank you, Nancy. I'm so glad you figured out the technology. That was beautiful. <laughs> thank you. Very from my heart. I, I, I just like to say, Todd. Yes. Todd. Yes. Um, uh, Nancy, that, that was very beautiful. And everyone who has shared has been authentic and deep and, and, and moving. Um, I, I'm going to help Todd by saying, I, I think we should finish now. And Nancy was a perfect, beautiful tribute to her family and herself. And it is about expressing ourselves. And, and I am absolutely touched by the willingness of people to share their stories because that's what we all have in common. Yes. Our stories. And that makes us a community of like-minded souls. I agree with Susan and, so and, thank you. and to everybody who tuned in and spoke tonight especially in these times, uh, it is nice for us to come together and talk to each other, look at each other, listen to each other. Um, it's very appreciated. Thank you, David. Asad, do you have any parting words? Well, I just want to say that this subject for me personally is profound because having been on my own living away from both my father and mother for three quarters of my life that uh, the connection goes beyond geography and it is um, since they've passed away they're closer to me because there's a straight line that goes to them and sharing what we've all talked about today and working with David and Susan and hearing their stories has been uh, profoundly inspiring to me. And I want to thank everybody who's spoken and who has not spoken because I know there are so many other stories left to be told. And I would encourage and urge for everybody to maybe you can use this to put them down on paper and let it be let it be recorded for um, for posterity so others can benefit from the richness of your own experience and todd thank you for providing this platform and susan you're the one who spearheaded this whole thing mm -hmm. you and connell and um, it's a gift that you've given everybody and i hope that this can continue so um i i urge everybody to pick up on it and keep keep the feather in the air whatever euphemism we want to use but thank you all very very much the the uh, there was so much warmth and so much spirit in tonight maybe more so than any of our other pieces it was very personal and thank you so it's all because of you guys so thank you all very much um all right to our audience we're going to have more in about uh, in about three weeks
So um, make sure you check out the website and stay in touch. Um, to David, Susan, and Asad, I'm going to send you a quick link to a new Zoom so we could all say thank you and buy into a big virtual hug. And um, again, thank you to, to everybody out there all over the world. This was just a, a really, really precious night. Um, it will be replayed on our website, so you can go and check out smartphonetheater.com for that um, as often as you can. All right, everybody. Thank you again. Uh, much love. You guys are wonderful.